What's up everybody? This is Eddie and I'm joined by my man Adam. We are from FlexArm and we are coming at you from our beautiful facility right here in Walpock, Ohio for another educational and amazing demonstration. Now for those of you who are familiar with FlexArm, you know we love showing you just how big we can tap, but today we're going to dial it down and show you just how low we can go using some amazing taps from our partners at O. S G. So before we get started, remember, hit that subscribe button, you hit that bell to turn on the notifications so we can keep you in the loop with all the amazing content that we'll be sharing in the near future. And last but certainly not least, give us a huge thumbs up. So as we said today, we are going to be going low. So I got my man Adam over here and we're going to be utilizing our A32 pneumatic tapping arm. Now this is our standard and baseline pneumatic arm that has a 400 RPM motor that can go up to 9 16 but today my man Adam and I, we're going to see how low this bad boy goes. So what are we starting off with today, Adam? We are going to start off with a 632 in 6061 aluminum. There we go. And to show you just an array of what we're able to do, we're going to be hitting three different materials. We're going to start off in a softer aluminum. We're going to make our way over to a standard mild steel. And last but certainly not least, we'll be hitting in stainless. So we've got aluminum here. What's the first size we're doing, man? We're, we're doing 632. There we go. Let's go ahead and let it rip and let's see how right. it does. Put a bit of lube on that. All right. All right. Beautiful, I dig it, I dig it. Now one thing to note is it's very important, especially with these size of taps, really having the arm itself preventing any type of tap breakage. We do have that lubrication system that will be available for this unit, but for demonstration purposes, we do want to stress that how important it is to make sure we are lubricating the taps, especially at these smaller sizes. So Adam, what next size are we going to be utilizing today? We're going to bump it down to 440. 440, there we go. And as we can see, if you're in an application where you're using multiple sizes, it takes Adam probably less than a handful of seconds to be able to go from one size to the other without missing a beat. All right. There we go, ripping right through aluminum. So we've already got those two sizes down and let's quickly switch to the next size. Adam, what is the last one we'll be utilizing today? Last one we'll be doing is a 256. There we go, there we go. There we go. Some beautiful tears. So what we'll do, Adam, if you don't mind, let's take that bad boy off the block there. I'd like to get a close up just so we can see what type of threading we're creating here as we get that switched. So if we can, we'll pull this up here, get that close HD view. Let's scoot up a little bit here. All right. So as you see, we're featuring the three different hole sizes here, able to rip through those, creating no tension on those taps. Again, important to make sure we keep everything lubricated, but ripping right through aluminum. So with that being a test well passed, we're going to move on to, what is it, mild steel now, sir? Yep, this will be 1018 mild steel. There we go. And as he's getting this set up, um, we've had a couple of questions about this bad boy right here. So if we're looking, might get this in the camera, we have ourselves, this is our uh, spanner wrench. Now, this is going to be very important, especially in some of these smaller applications, because the way that it works, Adam, could I have one of those tap holders, please? Yes. Thank you, sir. What you're going to need is to make sure with these being or having a clutch built into the tap holders themselves, it's going to be relatively important to be able to have this wrench to tighten and loosen these taps so you can ensure that you do not break them and also to allow that clutch to engage. So another important tool to be able to utilize when diving down to some of these smaller sizes. So Adam, we've got, uh, what is this, a mild steel here? Yep. Good deal. And then what size are we starting off with? We'll start with a larger 632. Let's let her rip, man. There we go. And then with this, especially in this specific sizing, you're going to be noticing that this tapping arm is going to be able to replace a variety of different other machines, such as your mag drills, your cordless drills. You've got even drill presses, and we've even seen some customers try to tap in this type of sizing in their CNC machines. But as we're seeing here, you could take that tapping offline and do it much faster, ensure that perpendicularity without having to break taps. So Adam, let's move on to the next one. What do we got? All right, doing the 440.
Okay, to no surprise, to no surprise. And so as we switch to our smallest size here, wanted to note quickly here, we do have a Jacobs chuck option as well. So even though we're sticking with that standard 400 RPM motor option here, we've just got your standard chamfering tool. Now you can put a variety of tools within this specific holder and put that right into that quick change chuck. I mean, you can use, whether it's reaming tools, deburring, chamfering, uh, countersinking and last but certainly not least we get a lot of questions about light drilling stress on the light size but if you do have some type of pre-operations before you're doing the tapping or even after remember you do have the option to have this Jacobs chuck to be able to do any type of cleanup work or pre-work on those holes all right so what's the last one we're gonna be rocking today all right we're gonna do our smallest 256 Man, we are just ripping through them today, man. Like absolutely butter. no challenge, no challenge there. So started off with the aluminum, absolutely ran through it, going into that mild steel, doing great with it being kind of the base. Now is gonna be the real test. We're gonna be moving on to stainless steel, but you're gonna notice with the 400 RPM motor, even at the same sizings, the flex arm is not only equipped, but made quite literally to be able to do jobs along these lines. So we've got him set up here. Adam, what's the first hole we're going to be doing in this stainless? We'll be doing our 632. There we go. You know, and as we're going through each of these, I know we've got two of them left, but we've talked about a little bit about what these arms are replacing. And a big convenience, especially at these smaller sizes, is to ensure really two things, precision because when you're dialing down to this type of size, precision is obviously gonna be a very important factor in that finished part, and also perpendicularity, because when you're pushing down with the mag drills, when you're pushing down with the drill press, whatever it may be, they can create some convenience, but it's gonna be hard to beat the precision and perpendicularity that's brought to you with one of these flex arms, especially when we dial down to these smaller sizes. So, Adam, what's next, man? Doing our 440. 440, all right. Wonderful, wonderful. And as we do the quick change, Chuck, one thing to note as well, another item that we're gonna be replacing is we have customers to this day, surprisingly or not, that are using hand tapping wrenches here. So imagine taking a tap of this size, placing it in this tap wrench and trying to not only maintain that accuracy, but not break the tap. It, it's very difficult to do, and even though it has been done for many years, there are just much better options to be able to compare that and to get that thread count that you're looking for without breaking your tap. So Adam, is this the last one we're rocking today? Last one. Let's tear it up, man. I have faith in you. Look at that, man. So man, we've gone through three different materials, three different sizes per material. And I don't know about you, Adam, but it looks like it just absolutely tore through each of these. We got a pretty solid thread quality. I'm gonna see what we can do in this stainless here. Let's get a close up of this, see what type of image quality we can get, just to show that we're just not going through these holes on the way they are. We're actually making some solid threads here. See if we can get a little bit. Nonetheless, we got a little bit of view here, but with that being said, again, three different hole sizes that are very small, also very popular and known for being high quantity type of jobs and absolutely rip through them. So before we wrap some things up, Isaac, would you please be so kind as to pull up that sheet that would go over the cost savings benefits of the tapping arm. So if what you're seeing here on the side of the screen is a handful of these general cost saving benefits, one of them, it does allow you to take the part out of the CNC to machine it faster, to reduce those cycle times and actually empower your operator to utilize a machine tool that doesn't really take a lot of setup and or know how to be able to use. So it reduces a lot of that user error maintains the perpendicularity with some of these small taps and again using those hand drills we have to make sure that you are maintaining because that's how you break taps as well as ruin parts and nobody likes that. Aside from that, you're eliminating the risk of cross-threading. That's why we have that 400 RPM motor. It takes zero adjustment. You don't need to adjust your air or any type of in or out settings. 400 RPM all day will get you done, get you taken care of. 
It also allows you to improve some of these CNC cycle times, eliminating the tap breakage, which is one of the largest and biggest benefits that these arms will provide. Reducing that CNC programming time, you know, because programmers do not do it for free. You'll be able to free up some of your CNC for more complex parts while you can have the operator doing the tapping offline. You can increase that throughput also by doing so. And last, hey, but certainly not least, it is infinitely more cost effective to be able to tap some of these parts online. So really with that, it's been an amazing demonstration. Adam over here being a true expert made it look like it was nothing, but that's what happens when you, tap, when you team up a flex arm tapping arm with our amazing OSG taps. So for that, thank you Adam for being here for us. Thank no you all the viewers. Hopefully you learned just as much as we did today. Thank you for, to our good friends there at OSG. And before we leave, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so we can keep you in the loop of all the amazing content that we'll be releasing. Give us a huge thumbs up. And for more info, make sure you check out our amazing website at Flex Machine tools.com. I'm Eddie. This is my man, Adam. We're coming at you with Flex Arm. You take care, stay flexing, and we'll see you next time.